very much. Thank you very much, Julie and Remy, for having me here. It's really uh, talking about the imposter syndrome. Uh, I know that. And I will just talk about, about me very quickly. I'm Brazilian. Uh, I live in France. Yeah. And I'm, uh, my parents are Italian, so I speak four languages very badly. So <laughs> please bear with me, because English is not the best one. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, I've worked, uh, I've been working with the web. I, w I code and design for web since there was no design possible on the web. So since 1995, so very old. And since then, since I've started working with the web and since people are start, started building for the web, I noticed that something, that something fundamentally at odds with the, with the simplicity and the beauty and the uniqueness of the web. And that's what I would like to, think of, to talk about. Because most of you, as I see, most of you are less than 30 years old, so you practically born with the web. Uh, you, you, you've known the web since always. So we take the web for granted, and if we forgot how valuable it is for us. So we start, I'm going to start to talk about the, web, the front web, uh, seeing what is important for us, why, why, what is really what makes the web unique and so special and so valuable. First is a standard. Web, the standard. The web is a standard. It doesn't be, uh, belong to a private company that one day would just say, well, it's not making enough money, I'll just sell it or just disappear or just I don't care anymore. No, the web, as Tim Berners-Lee puts it, a web is, we own the web because it's open, it's a standard, and it's, all, it's ours. So this is very powerful. The, the fact that it's an open standard, that means that virtually anybody can participate in and write the standards with uh, W3C. And also, uh, for some time, the standards are now what we call the living standards. So uh, it means that it w it's always evolving. It means we don't have to wait uh, a year for a new version. We don't have to wait six months for a new release. No, it's always evolving, and the browsers uh, it gets in, in, uh, installed uh, the, the novelties gradually. So it's very dynamic. And that's super important for the web because that makes the content universal. Universal meaning that that's part of the architecture of the web. That, mean, that means that we can access the web no matter which kind of connection we have, a high speed, a low speed, it doesn't matter if you, uh, which software, which user agent you have to access the web. It doesn't matter where you are in the, in, in the globe, it doesn't matter which language we spoke. That makes very powerful medium. Also, it's future friendly. Of course, if you're building, what you're building is based on the standards what you're building, we go, grow up with the standards, so you, you, it's always evolving together. So you don't have to just take it, uh, like Flash, for example, you just throw it out and you start again with something else. No, this is always evolve. <clears throat> Another powerful notion, simple but very powerful notion, is the, the notion of content, style, and of course, behavior separation. Uh, as Jeremy, Keith puts it, and uh, uh, this separation of layers of content, style, and behavior allows for a loosely coupled system that if one piece fails, the others won't. It won't impact the others. If CSS fails, my HTML, that, my, that means my content, it stays, uh, it stays put, it stays accessible, it keeps accessible. If JavaScript fails, of course it's not, we're going to see, but if JavaScript fails, uh, HTML should not fail. We still have access to our HTML, that means to our content. That means the, the most important piece we have on the web. <clears throat> that means with the, this style, uh, the, the notion of content style and behavior separation allows for a resilient content. 
allow us uh, for uh, give us the uh, scalable content. That means if three years from here, from from today, I just I want to make an, a new design for my site, I'll just touch the CSS. I don't need I need I don't need to touch the HTML or maybe just a little bit. That means we. I have, we can focus our work on what it's about, style, layout, so I will touch only the CSS, I don't have to touch HTML. And reusable, we see that all the time with the search engines, we, or, or we can reuse parts of a website and reuse it any, somewhere else in the web. Another super, super powerful thing in a notion of the web is semantics. And uh, unfortunately, it is very ignored. Uh, but I think that makes, that's one of the things that makes the web unique. Semantics is what gives meaning to, to our content. And when, when it's talk about giving meaning, we, we think about screen readers. But it's not just about conveying information to screen readers. It's conveying information to any uh, any user agent that's capable to interpret the HTML. So uh, this makes our content retrievable, understandable, and of course accessible. And there's no other medium, I don't believe it, there's another one, that can convey information and, uh, um, yeah, convey information, sorry. <laughs> Uh, in an accessible and meaningful way as the web does. Uh, that was the web by the end of the 20th century. I don't believe you, you've known that. That was what, all, all we could do when we were trying to make a, make a design. So, yeah, we couldn't. Okay, we did have just paragraphs under, one under the other. And somebody has a great idea to deviate table tags to create a to create layouts. Because we are so frustrated as visual designers, I am one so. Uh, and suddenly, well, that's okay, we can do sophisticated designs, we can, we can create columns, it was a breakthrough. And of course, everybody jumped into, into that. And then, we had what we used to call the tag soup. So our content, Bits of pieces of content was simply drawn in, in a completely verbose and complex uh, code of TDs and, uh, and TRs and tables. It's, what, it's a nightmare. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare, a nightmare to ma maintain. And af after that, it get worse because we added some spicy to the <laughs> to the uh, our soup. We added style attributes. This is something, something, style attributes. So, there was the first time that I, I remember that we, we it en went down the drain all the, these three strands that we, I just talked about. Content and style separation, we didn't have anymore because we, uh, the, we put a lot of style uh, attributes in our code We've lost it. We've lost standards because most of these style, style attributes were, uh, were some uh, proprietary from some, some browsers. Uh, well, the standards, they get some, but it was still a little bit, uh, yeah, it's not really standard. And also, we, uh, we've lost semantic, of course. Our content was just in a table cell. So that was the first time that I saw uh, that we started tampering with the front web. Fortunately, <laughs> in 2004, the browsers, yeah, this is a classic. <laughs> uh, 2004, the, 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 there was new browsers that started to support properly um, the standards. So, wow. Genial, cool, we, we can finally have content and style separation. We can have our proper structure, semantic HTML, and have a nice uh, 
CSS that will take, will take care of the style or the, or the layout. But really, somebody told me that I, I was really uh, optimist and that, that's true. We just changed the, the flavor of the soup and we started having a tag soup of divs and, and spans. Unfortunately, that's what we have until today. So again, so again, no, no semantic. Uh, yeah, we have, we, 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 we had, we were treating our style and our um, uh, layout with CSS, but our HTML wasn't better. And, it, and this one, I don't, I don't think anybody see coming. <laughs> Class uh, soup. I, I think is I, I want to cry when I saw that. I think that's, that's the human nature. We give one, one step forward and two backwards. And, the, and now we are backwards. We are really on two, two backwards. Just look at that. <laughs> that's from Medium. It's a screen copy. I just left the, the CSS part because <laughs> it's uh, pitiful. And they're using pixels. Uh, and the worst thing here is that we have thousands of, uh, we have several paragraphs, and all the paragraphs, they have exactly the same infinite list of classes. Though they are exactly the same, and they, all of them are paragraphs. And you say, why we are polluting HTML with utility classes if we just use the damn selector? You have a paragraph. You have a list of properties. Just give to all the paragraphs that have the same parent this, this, these properties. But really, I don't know. <coughs> it's like, um... and as you wonder, uh, yeah, I'm just talking about mostly HTML. I know the front web is not about HTML. But as I love a metaphor, uh, I don't see, don't, don't, don't know if you see okay. Um, let's say that the front web is our house, okay? In this case, CSS would be the, the style of our house, the way we paint our windows or our doors, the wallpaper, the, the furniture we use. <clears throat> let's say JavaScript is the way our windows and doors open and closes. The, the way the heating system works, for example, that will make HTML the very foundations of our house. And of course, it, the, if you have a problem with the foundations of your house, you jeopardize the, the very structure. You jeopardize the whole house. So, of course, you can, for example, change the colors of, the, of your windows every three years. You can change the wallpaper every, every year if you want. You can change the furniture of your house every month if you want. But you cannot change the very foundation of your house or fix it without lots, lots of time and lots of money. That's why, for me, uh, that's why I, I mostly talk about HTML here because that the matrix of what you're building on, okay? And as I love a, a metaphor, that's what I think the front web is. Uh, the Dorian Gray's pro portrait, and you know, I, I believe you know where I'm going with this. This is the front web. It's beautiful. Uh, it's about looks. And we think, oh, well, it's really nice, but if you take I look behind the code, behind the looks, that's what we have. We have a decaying code, we have a prolix code, we have a, a an inch, uh, no, so without the structure, a terrible, uh, terrible code. But, okay, if, if, our, if, our, if we want to build and rebuild the same thing and waste time and money doing things over and over again, no problem, this is up to, to, to the, the person that owns, owns the site, the website. But the thing is that today, the final user are noticing the decay behind the looks. 
We have, <coughs> sorry, we have beautiful performance. Uh, perceived performance is horrible, uh, especially on mobile, it's terrible. I'm, I'm really starting to count Mississippis when I uh, load pages, 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, it's really terrible. And I'm, I don't usually go to very complex sites on, on, the, on my mobile, but it, I don't understand what's going on. So, we not just have uh, uh, a, uh, a very heavy, heavy, he very heavy websites, but they are still not accessible, and that's what we have. For me, that's what is the web, the front web today. Thousands of abstractions and uh, dependencies, and thousands of tools and frameworks and JavaScript frameworks and single-page applications. And I won't st get started because we just have 30 minutes. <laughs> or it's just, I, I could talk the whole day. We just simply broke the web with this one. So it's a. Uh, so we, what, why are we doing that? Why are we tampering with the front web? Because nobody is benefiting from that. Um, as Oxford Harrison is a very wonderful article, I think, we think the more the web. He says, yeah, exactly, we, ha we have created more problems with our tools than the ones we solved. And that's what's happening. Uh, I don't know if you, I, I work a lot with Angular framework, and I don't know if you, if you already done it, try to update the version of Angular, and... <laughs> try to mix and um, make the, the, the depend all the dependencies work together, and nightmare. I work for a, a, a project there, they have six months, and they're still struggling to do that. So, yeah, and nobody, not, not the developers benefit, benefiting from that, and not the, the user, surely not the user. So, what, what is the problem? What is going on? What, what, why we're always trying, we're trying to change the nature of the web and force the things over and over again. I've tried, that's something I think about uh, uh, for a long, long time. And I've, of course, I had to uh, resume things a lot to put in, in a talk. But I'll, I'll try to... Um, uh, uh, find the sources of the problem. So, some of the sources of the problem, I think he is a very big source of problem. <laughs> he is a developer. Uh, and he's young, of course. He's young, he has any physical constraint, still, yet. Uh, he has the latest uh, devices, uh, uh, the very high speed connection. And, of course, performance is not a problem for him. Uh, accessibility. No, he, he, he sees very well. He, he's completely... Uh, anything goes wrong with him. So, the problem is that. The problem, one of the problems, is that he, we develop for ourselves. I'm not talking about myself. I I'm, I'm, I'm really have problems today, but... <laughs> People, young people, <laughs> but that it, when we come, we are, when we uh, develop for ourselves, of course, we cannot uh, be uh, uh, increase awareness to the problems and the 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 constraints the final user may have. And also, we we work very far from the user experience experts, the designers, the, the client, and even the, the, the final user. So we're completely in our bubble, in our uh, dumb, and we, we don't see anybody else. Also, we don't get the nature of the web. We develop, and, but we don't know, we don't... Uh, uh, we ignore... Uh, Notions like semantics, for example. We ignore why it is important, the separation of content and style and behavior. 
uh, I have plenty of times where I had to discuss with the developer why we have to uh, use, for example, an obstruse, an obstruse JavaScript, and they didn't understand why. So they don't. We, uh, we as developers, we don't understand uh, the, the those three basic strengths that the web has. And I think it's worse, even. We despise HTML and CSS. We despise front technologies. We treat it as a second, second-hand hand languages. Uh, like Oxford Harrison puts it again, it, we treat it, uh, the HTML as a compiled target, an implementation detail. How bad is that? That's really... But I understand some way, okay? Because, it, yeah, it, HTML demands semantics considerations, something that we don't, we as developers, we as engineers, we don't, we don't get, we do not use it to, we didn't learn it. So it's, some, it's, it's, some, it's a notion that's completely new to us. And as I've said, we work far from uh, user experts, far from the content strategists far from, from the needs of the client, of the user. So we, we don't have this um, ability and this um, reflex to think about what, it, what is my content, which content, what is the role of my content when I'm coding. So they, they simply don't get semantics. I was... Um, 15 years ago, as this is really not a, a, a new problem, it always existed. Uh, about 15 years ago, I was talking to a, a developer at work and I was explaining why semantics was important, why accessibility was important, and he was like, he, he didn't, he was really bored. Okay, so it was like, and uh, a moment he just stepped back like he was leaving and he said, yeah, but, yeah, I, I understand, but, you know, now we're going to start w working with a new framework. And with this new framework, we won't need to write HTML anymore. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what, what you mean if, you don't, if you, you're building a house without a foundation. And I, I think probably he was talking about React, I, I think. So this is how... Yeah, how contempt, uh, how the, the contempt we have to, uh, to, towards HTML. And CSS, also we can tell, talk the whole day about the problems with CSS, because developers don't learn CSS. Um, I'll quote again Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy Keith. Uh, he says, it, th there's a, something that I, I believe is very true. Developers, they always heard, oh, CSS is easy, uh, no problem, we, uh, there's a, everybody does it, so let's... But when they really start doing it, they realize it's not that easy after all. It's not that, of course, just go and learn a little bit, because there's a basics, there's some basis for the CSS that you have to learn, otherwise you... Yeah, it would be very frustrating. And so it's frustrating, they just put away, they, they just get a, another tool to, to, to deal with that. Because of, yeah, um, there's, a, there's the visual part, the CSS. You have a visual um, approach that developers use don't, usually don't have. They, we deal with data, we deal with logic, we don't, we don't deal with, uh, with visual stuff, with graphical um, details. So I understand that is a, there is a problem to, it's not natural when you start developing for the web to go, and, and f to go in the flow of the CSS. And also, front, uh, front developers are not the cool kids of engineer. Of course, you cannot be a cool kid if you're working with no, uh, not real programming languages, with second-hand hand languages. 
uh, feminine languages. I've already heard that, yes, CSS is called feminine. And also, you cannot be cool if you even earn less than back, uh, the back-end uh, developers. So what you did? We have, somebody has the great idea to create the full stack. Yeah, the full stack is all powerful developer that can take care of all the sides of the web development. But the thing is, uh, I don't know about you, and I, I don't want, it's not that I want to uh, point fingers to full stacks. That's not the problem. The problem is somebody has the great idea to pay one person to do the job of two. And uh, we know that is not because you come from the back end and you start to having to work with the front end that you learn or that you start to give more care, uh, be more careful with, uh, with the front end. It's not at least what I see when, in my work. Uh, people, they just, oh, damn, I have to work with that. I have to work with the front, okay, just give, put some divs there, uh, a, a simple tool for the CSS, and that's all. And, you know, the best uh, thing that we have to do is to make the front our own image. And we GS everything. And that's, so we don't have to take care of the front anymore, don't have to think about it anymore. And please, don't mess with our servers. We're going to put everything on the client side. So it takes care of that. So again, we are putting developer experience in front and back and all. We, uh, the developer experience is the first thing they think we think about, the second thing, the third thing, and we never think about user experience. And, but, Great user experience requires great front development. You cannot have a performance site if you're, if you're tampering with the front. You cannot have an accessible site if you're tampering with HTML. You cannot have a good site, okay? So if you want to have a, and of course performance, and uh, search engines is important for search engines also. Uh, uh, a semantic HTML is, is, is important for accessibility. So you have to, to uh, take care of the front development if you want to have a great user, uh, user experience. So what do we do? If only we could find uh, if only uh, we could find, we could give, uh, find fixes to, to these problems we just pointed. And of course, it's very hard. And I, I showed somebody uh, my presentation, and they say, oh, you're so naive. <gasps> oh, you're very optimistic and naive. So, well, but at least let's try to see what we can do to fix those problems. I think anything must, come, must pass through proper training. I can, can't stress that enough. Proper training, if there's one, only one fix we can give to the front web, is to give proper training. Because uh, there's always, always, I've always seen a non-adapted curriculum. Uh, that I work a lot with interns or trainees, and uh, when I always ask them what they have in their training, oh, sometimes a little bit of HTML, uh, CSS practically never. Age, uh, accessibility is something they never talk about. So uh, it, they come, they, I don't know, I am talking about France, of course. I don't know how, how the, the web development training is done in, in England, but in, in France it's pretty much like that. And when, when they come, when my trainees come and I, I explain to them that I'm going to teach them only HTML and CSS there, they, they don't even understand why. <laughs> why you're not going to teach us React or a, a Node.js, I don't know. So, and one thing is that's worse, I think, 
is that the, th the people they're teaching us, they come from the same flawed cu curriculum. So they come with the same prejudices. So they pass on and on the prejudice against the front. So of course, uh, during their training, all the advantages, all the singularities of the web, of the front web, they just disappear in favor of Node.js or React or Docker or any, or in favor of tools. Another thing that we have to do is end full stack, sorry. Yeah. This, is very <laughs> this is very optimistic. I don't know how we can do that, but, and, and of course, I don't say uh, that you cannot do both very well. I, I design and I code, and I'm not very super great to any of them, but I do very well, at least both. I can design, I can code. So, uh, so I think, of course, you can be a good back-end developer and, uh, and also be a good uh, front developer. The thing is that the very reason for the existence of the full stack is the contempt for the front. So, since the beginning, the, 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 the very reason for the, the very existence of full stack is flaw, it is already not good. And of course, when we work in, in a tight schedule, we know that one of the sides will suffer. Usually, you know that what will suffer is the front. And Always we are in a hurry, we put divs everywhere, and we get a, a tool for the CSS. So that's the problem with the full stack. Another thing that I think is very, really, really very important, uh, to promote, to, to get the developer closer, work closer to designers and the, uh, and the client. And so we can understand, he can increase awareness about the needs and problems the, the final user have. Understand what accessibility is about. Understand uh, the constraints a user may have to access their websites. And I think that's the only way that you, um, the developers will really uh, I, I don't know how I say the, the word. <laughs> well, yeah, we increase awareness about the final user. I've heard about the dead of the web uh, more times than I can count, all the time. Uh, but as I said, the web, web is open. There's no other medium so exciting, so pure, so... so um, Effective as the web today is standard, is universal. So I think it's hard to kill. So instead of predicting the, its death, let's cherish it. Let's take care of it. Let's avoid it to become the monster we're starting to think is coming. So again, I'm naive and I'm optimist. But I think that maybe the way to, to fix the web is to fix human nature, finally. Uh, maybe make things less about making money, less about self-satisfaction, and more about improving people's lives and understanding the impact of what you're building. Thank you very much.